Stephen Pasquale is seeing The Color of Money this fall as the star of Junk at Lincoln Center Theater. Hear the popular Broadway leading man rave about Ayad Akhtar's financial thriller, gush about his new offstage leading lady, Philippa Sue, and more on this week's super cool episode of Show People. Mr. Pasquale, how Hello, are you? Darling. So good to see you. Good to see you. First of all, let's just be very clear. This is a, this is kind of a makeup uh, show, people. <laughs> yes, right. The, the last time you were yeah. here, there were some issues with the climate, with the temperature control. If you were, by you were, some issues you mean it was like 108 degrees. You were game. You were yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, it, and you can't tell, by the way, I just watched the interview again. You cannot tell that there's any... I think it's your favorite interview. And also my hottest interview. <laughs> Yeah, my hottest we were subject. both just a ball of clothing. Literally my hottest subject ever. <laughs> that was uh, was a lot. So anyway, welcome back. Thank I hope you. It's are freezing. Things are, are you God. okay? It's a, yeah. little, it's a little chilly. A muffler or something over there <laughs> hope you have there? a cool drink. Are you, yeah, everything great. This is entirely comfortable. It's positively <laughs> civilized. Yes. So good to see you as always. Thank you. Good to see um, you. So I watched our last interview to make sure <laughs> you couldn't actually tell we were hot. How, how do you feel about like reading um, comments and reading things about people write like strangers? I mean, I'm pretty good at understanding that like one out of three people are insane so yes. I don't let is that the actual number I mean it's you know it's it seems pretty close these especially days especially these days yeah <laughs> maybe it's going so up I a try not to let any comments uh, upset me uh -huh. but I, I generally avoid them why were there some horrible yeah, so I, I, I thought it was interesting I read some of the comments on our last interview yes. on oh, YouTube I, can't wait I don't read YouTube comments for, for some of these reasons but yes. let's just let's just read some of them let's yeah be, it'd be fun maybe great uh, Violetta <laughs> said Paul I adore you but let him speak. Amen, Violetta. Is this Amen. A, a, so I just wanted You're to like, like Broadway's David Letterman. <laughs> I have heard some people have said this to me actually. I've seen a similar comment on YouTube. Yes. So I don't know if it's all Violetta. I don't know if she's like <laughs> leading this campaign. But Against I have, you? I've heard critiques that maybe I don't let people speak. So I just wanted to sort of set this up in the beginning that if well, you feel I mean, that with me, that's pretty tell me. Can I speak? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. I mean, that's a pretty harsh cr critique of yours. I feel like you do a really good job of filling the experience and the conversation with dead with, air. With the, the dead <laughs> air. Of well, because if you don't, there could you know you get like a less gregarious guest. You're gonna have some uncomfortable silences. But maybe I'm not finished. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually don't have that critique of you, but I'll take it. Let me speak, Paul. For Violetta, uh, I might leave some of those airs in, in this interview. Great. Let's and then I'll have nothing to say we'll in that We'll just keep moment. it awkward. Yeah. We'll make it awkward. <laughs> so anyway, that's one. Anna said, he needs to sing with Pippa with like 18 exclamation points. Who is this Pippa? Uh, Philippa, my wife, my recent bride. I thought you called her Pippa. I do call her Pippa. Oh, okay. Yes, just, but yeah. she, but most people Philippa probably Su know her Philippa, as Philippa uh, Sue. Sue Pascal. Pasca I mean, uh, no, married. didn't take my name. No, no. No, she's not. Who the patriarchy, name. darling? She's Philippa Sue, <laughs> but she's my wife, and um, we yeah, often you're married sing now. You were just engaged last time you were here, so that's Correct. some progress, life Correct. progress. Yeah. She's 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 stuck around. She's thank stuck God. around. <laughs> do you want to sing with her? We I would love to sing together. We've workshopped a couple things together. Uh, and we're some Billy Joel online, I saw that. We did a little Billy Joel online, and we had an, she did an evening at 54 Below. I joined her there. She's a great singer. I would love to, we'd love to find a musical to do together. Okay. We're so keeping yeah, our we'll eyes peeled. Anna. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, Anna. Rachel just wrote in all caps, I loved Do No Harm. That must be my mother. And if you <laughs> That's, hey, Ma, we get Stop. it. It's you, canceled. You it's over. You watched, and Dad didn't even watch. It was so bad. Really? Is that true? I mean, he tried, but he was like, Steve, <laughs> you know, my dad's the best. He was like, that was not good. <laughs> Did dad watch your Mark Furman? Yes, of course. Of course. That was I very mean, beloved. Who, who, yeah, we don't watch that. Yeah, th I mean, do no harm. Although many wonderful people involved, I'm afraid, was uh, not our finest hour in terms uh, of quality storytelling. You know, things get rebooted randomly nowadays. True. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a musical version. You know, it premiered, we talked about this last time, it premiered as the lowest rated yeah, television drama since the advent of the Nielsen box in Woo! 1981, <laughs> soon to be unseated by Anthony Edwards' thing that he made at ABC that same season. But for about two weeks, that honor was ours and ours alone. Yeah, is that on your IMDb page? I yeah, totally, okay. totally. Uh, the by the way, just to like, you know what's an interesting tidbit? Let me talk, Paul! Sorry. You know what's an interesting tidbit about that? <laughs> a terribly rated network television show would be like a million viewers, a million and a half viewers, yeah. which would be kind of a hit if it were a cable show or a Netflix show or a Showtime show. Or Isn't that interesting? The standard is so different in terms of just the amount of eyeballs you need to get for something to be successful. Uh, back to me. 
I was letting you talk. Oh, thank you. Uh, the escapeologist. Uh, another thing about that, Paul. <laughs> I just, I think that, no. <laughs> I'm the kidding. escapeologist. I don't know how that, this person mm. secured that name, but somehow mm. they did on YouTube. Uh, Interesting. Just wrote, I would love to see him in streetcar. Have you ever thought about that? You know what? I'm gonna, I just sent Sarah Paulson a text the other day saying, let's do streetcar together. She was like, I'm terrified, but I love it. So there it is right there on the Wait, record. Wait, did she actually say that? Yeah, we were like, Look, that sounds exciting. And then we'll probably never talk about it again. But it was, a mo it was two artists being like, wouldn't that be so great and fun? So I, make it happen, Paul. Oh my God. I, no, I'm not when she, she's, the, she's the person to play that part, I think. Yeah. She would play it better than anyone maybe ever has, SP, looking at you. I, I, I have to stop this interview. I can't stop doing anything <laughs> but that. Yeah. I, I want that. Yeah, wouldn't that be good? Yeah, I want that to happen. It's also a, a, G, a masterwork. And you know, it's fun to work on stuff that is just so perfectly written. Yeah. Yeah. Tennessee Williams. I mean, yeah. can't Tennessee go wrong. Williams. Can't go wrong. Karen Villanueva, Villanueva, Villanueva. wrote, I, and I, I wonder if things like this happen to you often. I, I remember I saw Carousel in Chicago in 2015. I remember I fell in love with Billy and Julie. It wasn't until two years after I saw the show that I realized it was Steven. Does this ever happen to you? I mean, that's a big theater. Let's be clear. I mean, the audience was is kind a, of far away from you at the Lyric. That was a big, that's a big, that was a big. I think it's like 6,000 seats. It's 6,000. So, so to be fair, Although I think your voice is kind of, but do, pe do people ever tell you that? Like, I didn't know that was you. I mean, she didn't realize she was watching us? She, is that I what she's saying? Was, I didn't know that was you. I just Somebody just kidnapped her and took her to see Carousel? Yeah, she didn't know. Some people, not everyone's a super Well, that's fan. fun, yeah. Not also, everyone just follows you around yeah. from show to show like I do. Maybe that, she just <laughs> wandered in to see Carousel. Actually, you're the only one. <laughs> I think that uh, theater fans are a different group of people than uh, television fans. So oftentimes, the, 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 the never the twain shall meet. So I, I do get that occasionally. Yeah, so anyway, P Balloon Panda said, do an interview I'm with not gonna, We're not gonna talk about Balloon Panda, <laughs> Paul. Can I talk about this? Well, obviously it's a fan of your Paul. wife. <laughs> She right, said please. do an interview with Pippa, but right now we're going to do one with oh, Steven. Okay. But maybe we'll do one with Pippa. The BD wrote, oh Steven, you ridiculous man, you. Okay. True, And then Accurate. Andrew Seaman, Simon? S E M O N? Mm -hmm. How would you pronounce yeah. that? Rannells. <laughs> Definitely Andrew Rannells. Come on. So Andrew Rannells wrote, <laughs> Paul, you are so thirsty. LOL. I could not love it more. I think I, mean, I was thirsty for you or I was acting. Maybe, well, maybe was, that was the day we had no. Uh, we were hot. We were hot. So maybe we were, we were hot. Were, so maybe, maybe it did somehow. We were like pouring Gatorade <laughs> all over our. <laughs> we were thirsty. Yeah. It did somehow play, I guess, right. that, that I Good. was thirsty. Great. So yeah. So, subtle Andrew Rannells. Yeah. <laughs> Does Andrew Randall sort of like follow you around? And <laughs> no, no, on no, but things? he's a great pal. And that's, I wonder how that's many fake accounts he has, actually. Oh, so many. <laughs> he's clearly an internet stalker. <laughs> We're kidding. We're just kidding, Andrew. <laughs> so um, you're in a show. You're in a play. It's fantastic. I'm in a great, huge, it's new American play. Junk. Junk. It's not junk. It's no. actually fantastic. Yeah, it's a super intense examination of finance in the 1980s and the practices that were put in place then. And um, it's one of the great pieces of writing I've ever been around. So when did this piece of writing get handed to you and did you get excited right away? And how did it this come into It got handed to me in May. Doug Hughes, who's our brilliant director, yeah. said let's uh, chat. And we met in that beautiful plaza at Lincoln Center, sitting like with the fountain in the background. Wow. And he was like, You're gonna do this it, is do a Pulitzer it. Prize winning playwright. He's one of the great minds, storytelling minds of our time. I really know how to direct this play. And I think you're the guy to play this part, and I, I certainly didn't need, need any more than that. I was sold uh, at that point. And yeah, and you saw this this play, and you saw this guy, and you were like, "This is this is a good thing for me." Like, what do you look for when you see something? Well, like that? I thought uh, I could I thought I could play him in a way that confuses the audience, which is uh, it, my goal. Which is the what is so brilliant about performing this play is that to feel the audience's ambivalence about this character who's based on a real life guy, Mike right. Milken. Yes. And to feel them sort of rooting for him in one minute and disgusted by him in the next. To feel them disappointed when somebody that he works with underma undermines him even though he's a criminal and breaking the law. And did you know anything about this world? I mean, maybe you've seen Wall Street. Well, I've seen my, brother's a, my brother's an investment banker. Okay. Uh, so I knew a little bit. My father worked in corporate America. Um, so I had your sort of news obsessed layman's knowledge. But Ayad Akhtar, our yep. brilliant writer, yes. is truly an aficionado. He's, he's read the Wall Street Journal every day since he was like a kid. And he um, really wanted to examine leverage buyouts, corporate rating, a debt-driven economy, a transactional economy, without sounding too academic. The play is a thriller, but it really holds a mirror up to 
raw, unfettered, rapacious, voracious American capitalism and whether or not we are doing it right. Those are spectacular adjectives. Aren't they? Those are great. I just came up with them. I, and I, you know what? Actually, they're in my pocket on a piece of paper. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. I think uh, we're going to take a quick break because those adjectives are good enough to get Oh, here. thank God. We'll be right back with more Stephen Buscemi. You're That's exhausting. <laughs> And we're back with Mr. Stephen Pasquale. How are you, sir? I'm really good. How are you? How's doing? the temperature? It's getting chilly. Sometimes when t- you know it goes on for a little bit, you know, yeah. we no, might I'm, heat I'm up the room. <clears throat> I'm entirely comfortable right now. Okay, actually. all right, good. I'm glad. So yeah. let's talk more about this junk. Okay, that junk. junk you're in every night. Yes, and it's great. It's fantastic theater. Thank you. Uh, it's really exciting the way it's staged. It's yeah. a big, a big cast, right? I think 23. Wow. Yeah, really and big. Doug Hughes did a great job staging. But you staging. have a lot of words to say. You have a lot of lines. It's like though. 170 pages, and it's it's only a two hour and 20 minute play, so it goes by very quickly. And if you hesitate for a second, the play will leave you in the dust. Is it easier to do a play that has so much bouncing, like to learn the lines? There's a lot of like, you know. It was harder to memorize, but once you know it, because it's very sort of Sorkin-esque, the, yeah. the speed at which it comes yeah. at you, it's really fun to play because once you know it, the sort of music of it, mm-hmm. uh, then it just is what it is. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? There's not a lot of pausey, pintery sort of kitchen sink. I'm going to do this with this moment. It just sort of goes. It's, a, it's really very much about the text and the information coming at you. It's really fun to play. What was the hardest thing I've ever been a part of in terms of memorization? Hmm. Is there any much screwing up? Have there been any like embarrassing moments on stage because there's so much there's been a couple. action? and Yeah. Well, the words come at you so fast. You can, you know, no one gets through a performance without screwing up a couple words because they uh-huh. come so quickly. You've done a lot of research yes. on this world. Yes. So convince the people why this isn't terribly boring. Why isn't the world of finance boring? And I know a lot of people kind of like zone out and they're like, "When's he going to do another musical?" And you know, like, here's why: it's a thriller, and it is a it is a one company trying to take over another company, right. and there's a timeline on that happening. And so the scenes come at you like lightning and it is high stakes and people 15,000 people may lose their jobs the economy may be affected the guy who's uh, leading the charge in terms of taking over this company is the, he's on the cover of Time magazine and his entire system of beliefs is new and dangerous and possibly criminal it is not an indictment it is a brilliant examination of real people uh, acting as they would have and and did in the 1980s and continued to today. Did you hang out with any of these guys down on Yeah, Wall my God, I've had so many Wall Street friends come. And the response is really mixed. They're either like, they get it, obviously, because it's their world, and they love that. They love a story about them. Yeah. Or they're like, I, I feel like Mike Milken is a hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, the irony being, Mike right. Milken broke the law like a hundred right. times and went right. to jail. And right. But, you know, it really asks the essential question, would you go to jail for two and a half years if you could walk away with two billion dollars? Would you, Paul? That's that's a white collar jail where you get like an Xbox. Oh, Xbox. Yeah, and Xbox. grass. I would. These are the these are the questions. Imagine the musicals we could do with two billion dollars in the bank. Right. We could produce oh all I mean, the I old could, dusty old. Things. I mean, I could produce every musical starring Stephen Pasquale I want to do yeah. on Broadway. Yeah, Look and at I could that. get paid. Let's get that carousel in here. <clears throat> I know. I mean, there's so many things. Yeah. But would I get you to perform Bridges of Madison County every night? You could. As, as, as often as I want. Yeah. For, for, for the right For price. the proper <laughs> price, you could. So that leads me to how are your finances? Are you a smart guy? If I, if I saw your uh, bank accounts, and is, is this making I you am, smarter? Are you good at investments? I mean, I'll, I'll let show, you talk now. I'll show, my, I'll show our collective asses in terms of artists. We all basically suck at it. <laughs> I'm probably a little bit better than your average actor, okay. but I still suck at it relative to like another adult. So... <laughs> 15 years ago, I hired an accountant to take care of my finances so that I could just go and do jobs and work mm-hmm. in Canada and California and New right. York and Australia or whatever. And somebody else would worry about paying my taxes and commissioning the people that work for me. And so that was actually one of the best decisions I've ever made because now I just follow along without the stress of like checking my mail at home and I have to pay this bill and that person. And, and so um, that was a wise decision for me. Um, without him, I think I'd, I'd, I'd be in trouble. I'd be in jail for some accidental tax evasion. Okay, so you have it figured out because you have a... Uh, I got party. a guy. You have a third party hop. I got, you a, got guy. a guy. I got a guy. So it's important to get a guy. It's important to get a guy. How do people find a guy? What if, what if, uh, if you want to give some advice? I got him. I got the name. Just, just, just email me. Just, that guy. Just tweet at uh, Paul, <laughs> and I'll give you my guy. 
Uh, no, I'm pretty good at it. My father was really good at it. He was an accountant by trade, so uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm pretty responsible. Although, you know, I, I think by nature, artists are, we worry less about adulting. Right. You yeah, know what I mean? We just want to like tell that. stories and then people clap and <laughs> go to the Glass House Tavern afterwards. Since the show was set in the 80s, Joke. Yes, yes. Did you have fantasies that maybe you would have like crazy costumes? like? And just no, I, it was actually important to me that we just hinted at the fact that it was okay. in the 1980s because the last thing we want is like a wedding singer shoulder pads. <laughs> you know, and then it feels like a, like a, like a too light and too ridiculous. Right, of course. So we have a hint of it, Kathy Zuber, genius. She just gives you just enough to remind you that it's the mm -hmm. 80s. But the play is so poignant and timely now that it literally could be, have been written about today. Are there any 80s properties, because you grew up in the 80s? Oh yeah, man, come on that you would love to see like on stage? Well, you know, I, st I think it's hard to make an iconic movie a musical. Mm. I think like... Well, you that know, will tell Broadway because good luck. And that's all we're every, doing every, right every now. Every show. <laughs> I know, it seems to be all we're doing now. And you know, I, th they can be great. I mean, Full Monty was great. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's just hard to do. that revival, Stephen Pasquale? Yeah, God, that was... Was that even that long ago? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's time. Ooh, it's time for... It's time for a revival. Yeah. yeah. What else? Anyway, but yeah. You have a better, you have more encyclopedic knowledge of shows than I do. What else should we revive? What else hasn't been revived that like just is screaming for a revival? I'm putting you on the spot. You Paul. are putting me on the all spot. All right, let's talk I'm, about something else. I'm, I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> this is all about you talking. It's all about no, you. No, you've clearly, that woman affected you when she said stop <laughs> it's interrupting. Really, it's actually very upsetting to me. <laughs> well, I was actually excited that, uh, speaking of like Wall Street kind of world, sort yeah. of, Working Girl, I'm excited that might become a musical. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, is Working Lockhart. Girl is the William Hurt movie? No. What's Working Girl? No, Melly well, Griffith. Uh, you you could perhaps play the Harrison Ford role, Sigourney Weaver. That's got to be. You don't know Working Girl. I mean, I it's. But the River Run, darling, that was a long time ago. Those. You know, uh, th th actually, it's a connection to what you're doing because I saw that the same day I saw Wall Street, the movie oh, Wall Street. Man. They came out the same Christmas. I mean, uh, that Wall Street was Oliver Stone, right? Yeah. I mean, think about how. I mean, I know a lot of people like to dismiss him as a super radical, but he, you know, that was pretty timely. Like, the the. Insane yeah. amount of greed happening in that decade yeah. in that area of our country, you know. He really opened some eyes with that movie. Right. So you're going to do Gordon Gecko in the musical version, or you're just against well, the movie? You know that. You know what I loved what? was that uh, American Psycho. Oh, me too. And that was very much about that. I loved it. What a raw deal that show got. What? It should have been a monster hit. I loved it too. Are you kidding yeah, me? Loved it. I talk about it all the time. Yeah, me too. Uh, Timbers too. I saw Alex Timbers the other day. He was. He loved it too. We all saw it like a bunch of times. Sometimes the good stuff Isn't that doesn't crazy? last, and sometimes the turds just stay forever. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the steaming Broadway turds last forever, and the good shit lasts a hot minute. <laughs> and as we think about those turds, let's take another break. I'll be right back with more Stephen Pasquale. <laughs> And we're back with more Stephen Pasquale. How are you, sir? You, you're good? I'm good. You're good? It's chilly. It's chilly <laughs> so, here. on a bicycle built for Sue, tell me about uh, this hashtag. Oh my gosh, that it was, was a trending our hashtag a couple months ago. <laughs> was it really? That was our, uh, <laughs> we showed up in our, on a tandem bike to our wedding. That was our like cute little bit that we did. And okay, so wait, anyone stop. that took <laughs> pictures of the wedding, they were they were to hashtag it a bicycle built for. I sure. didn't know there was an actual bicycle involved yeah. in this. Of course, we didn't. You know, classic us. We didn't test drive it or anything, so it was like very dangerous. We almost ruined her wedding dress. It ended up being me like with my feet down, like walking, <laughs> because we couldn't we couldn't like do it <laughs> right without hurting ourselves. But that was our intent. And whose so, idea was that? Uh, Jason Mitchell Conn, our wonderful wedding planner. If you're oh. looking for a, um, okay, a, a look at great, you. you got all you got yeah. you got all kinds of guys. Yeah, I can't do anything other <laughs> than play finance scene. guy, a wedding guy. Yeah, come on, I can. I there's if I didn't have this job, I'd have no idea what I would do. do I you can't think, do anything else. Did he come up with that hashtag on a bicycle built for Sue? I think he. May, I think he's very well made. It's pretty specific. He's, yeah, it's he's, pretty crazy. He's so did the wedding go well? It went terrifically well. We had yeah. the most fun. It was yeah. a great group of people. Super informal. Um, and we had the best time. We got married. Super like informal. Did you wear a tie? I didn't wear a tie. I went to Catholic school, Paul. See that? So I try never, ever, ever to wear a tie because <laughs> I got stuck with one for 12 years as a kid. Oh, he's showing, oh, he's showing off a little bit of chest hair. I can't wear a tie. It's just too much for me. It makes me feel like I'm being Yeah, like, you don't assaulted. even actually, in the show, you wear a tie, but not the whole time. No, I, well, Mike Milken, uh, loosely based on Milken, he was a California uh, corporate raider. So okay. we did like some, we made some design choices to try to remind the audience that this right. wasn't your stereotypical like 
up, tied up right. Wall Street guy. Mr. Jonathan Groff, did he, was he part of this wedding? He officiated our wedding. That yeah, happened. He married us. Okay, yeah. that happened. And did he, yeah. did he do a good job? He did a great job. Okay. He did a great just, job. Just making sure. Yeah, we, we just said, just whatever you want, just don't do anything too crazy. Of course, he had Celia Keenan Bolger speak and Renee Elise Goldsberry give a little bit of a speech and Kelly O'Hara did a rap that Lynn oh. Manuel wrote. Wow. Which was hilarious and perfect. And it, of course, in true Jonathan Groff style, everything was just right. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad that all worked out. And yeah. How, and how is your beautiful wife? I just saw, just saw her on Broadway. She's, she's great. I think Parisian she'll be here woman. tomorrow she's, to do show people. She's fantastic. She's great in everything. Pound for pound, there's not very very many more talented people on planet Earth than yeah. she. Yeah. I and think. doing obviously doing plays and musicals. That's something that you really embraced going yeah. from one to the other, right? Yes, which is hard to do. People think of you as one thing. Yeah. And so it's important, or has been important to me to just yeah. always... Be so trying to think out of the box a little bit. And, and it's so convenient that you're both doing shows, fall mm -hmm. fall plays yes. on Broadway. You're with the same plays. day off. We do plays, and yes. we're, we're married, and we both do plays. Yes. And, and there's not much singing in our house these it's days. Very <laughs> it's very fancy. Yeah, yeah. Being married to an actress. Yes. Let's talk about that. So you're both in the business. We're both in the business. Is this something <clears> that <throat> makes you nervous? Is this something you know how to navigate? Is this something you have well, to like, take she, care of? I mean, the of? reason she's amazing is because she's like a super regular person and uh, an incredibly low maintenance artist, right. uh, as am I. So uh, most of the time that is not the case. Actors are, are famously insane. Right. So it's yeah. just, I think that's the reason we hit it off so well is because we just like to, you know, unwind and, you know, take the pressure off and not uh -huh. have an enormous amount of stress about this crazy line of work. How so many uh, times did you see Hamilton? 11 or 12 times. Okay. I mean, I've seen it a lot. Yeah. It's, you know, a landscape changing perfect piece of art. I can't believe my, my friend wrote it. I didn't know he was that much of a genius when we became friends. Right. Yeah, so it's been fun to watch it like really change the world. If only they could sell some tickets. <laughs> what do you think uh, Lynn should, what do you think he should do next? I mean, like, You know, you I think about that a lot. I haven't seen him in a while, but I'm dying to know what's going on in that brain of his. Yeah. You know? I, w I wonder about that too. Like what would the next, what would the next thing Something be? weird. I think he should get like weird. Okay. You know, not uh -huh. like a, a totally unobvious choice, which uh -huh. I'm certain he's already. Right. You know, because I'm sure a million people are like, contemporize this story right. or let do, you know, but I'm sure, I'm, I'll bet he's got some really so interesting. So you think it's in work. his brain? I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah. It's been, what, a year since he stopped yeah. working on that? Two years? And would you want to be a part of? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you want to get on that bandwagon. My rapping skills are amazing. Okay. <laughs> no, I would, I would, of course. Uh, I would, of course, if uh, anything he writes. You know, when the, one of the gr world's great writers uh, writes something, um, all of us would like to be a part of it. Right. And I love that, so you and Sarah Paulson have figured out that play. Remember? Well, I mean, it, I sent her a text. She was like, oh my God, that sounds so fun and terrifying. But that's all she we know so far. That, but I, now I'm going to put a lot of peer pressure on her. Yeah, please do. Well, now it's on camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do you and uh, Pippa ever do that? Do you ever go like, we should do something together? We, we do. Occasionally yeah. we do. Yeah, we think. What do you uh, do? Like, what do you well, do? Well, they're like, uh, somebody the other day was like, you guys should be in um, Pirates uh, of the Penzance together. And I thought, Pirates of the Penzance? There's no the in that, is it? Is it Pirates of Penzance? I don't is know, Paul. These are okay, questions I, I would ask okay. you. <laughs> uh, so apparently that that would be yeah, great that, and that funny could work. and hasn't been ex ex uh, you know visited in a while. Okay, so that was yeah. We we think about that a lot actually. Uh -huh. Although we are both quite fond of new, uh, you know, the idea of a new work. Of so course, yeah. everybody wants originating new works. something. New yeah. works, important Sweet. things. <laughs> so you're gonna do you're gonna go through the holidays, right? And you're both mm -hmm. in shows. Yeah. So what does that mean? Is that sort of like you know we have like your, uh, you get like the you get the holiday off and then you do like nine shows the day before and right. five the day so after. So it's not so like you get to sort of like go off to like a, no, a no. snowy ski yeah. resort and like yeah. I think we'll have to wait on our honeymoon until the summer. Yeah, the, right? yeah. So w when is that? Uh, it's uh, not on the schedule because there's uh, no honeymoon on the schedule. Not yet, but it's but we're, we'll come up with something. Jesus, you want to like there's put me on the spot or what here, buddy? It, there's not like a. Dream. So you haven't planned a honeymoon. What kind of husband are you? It, but there's not like a dream board of like here's idea ideally what we would do. Or yeah, we, we want to go to Italy or uh, oh. Europe or something, but we just okay. have to find like two weeks where we're not uh, busy. Yeah. And we're very lucky people. We're pretty busy. So. And how are you going to ring in the new year with her? I think we may have a get together uh, oh. in, our, in our apartment in Brooklyn. Do you yeah. have big parties? Is this like... Uh, well, we just moved, so this will be like one of our first. So we'll have to see how it goes. Okay. You know, see if the neighbors can stand us. Yeah. Oh, right. You're new. Yeah. We're in, the new, we're in a new okay. apartment, a new neighborhood. So okay. we'll, see if, we'll see if we really piss off our neighbors on New Year's Eve. If not, then we'll make it a regular right. <laughs> situation. Right. Okay. Well, uh, you have other places to go. 
Yeah, I'm going to go you? talk finance on Wall Street. You I never actually, thought I'd say that out loud. Because you're in junk, you have to go speak yeah. about... Yes. And you speak very intelligently about these things, but it's impressive. Well, but I'll be with Ayad Akhtar, who really is an aficionado. So any questions that are hard, I just literally look at him as if to say, can you take this one? <laughs> well, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, having me. I hope it was more comfortable Thank you for having the experience. air conditioning on and working. And everyone needs to see Junk at the Vivian Beaumont Theater. I mean, it's true. You guys love seeing a show at the Vivian Beaumont. Yeah, it's and if you love it, you can be a junkie. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steven. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. You knew you had to do that. <laughs>